Imagine you are going to buy a TV and you see a great financing offer. If you pay it back within six months, you don't have to pay any interest, it's just a thousand euros. But if you miss that deadline, it's going to cost you 2,000 euros. Why does this kind of contract exist and what are the consequences? That's what my research is about. The typical way of thinking about this kind of spending and why people borrow too much on credit cards and other forms of credit has been by thinking of consumption like a dinner. Every day you have to decide whether to eat at home, which is relatively cheap and potentially even healthier, or to go to a restaurant and get an easy meal but spend a lot. In this kind of situation, people will often favor the restaurant. They're thinking, no time like the present, I'm going to enjoy this. They realize that they shouldn't be doing this every day, they're living beyond their means, so they shouldn't be doing that tomorrow. Of course, the problem is that once tomorrow comes, that's going to be today, and again, they'll be thinking the same way, and they'll want to go to the dinner. This way, people end up living beyond their means, consuming too much, running up uh, too much debt. That would be the explanation for, uh, for very high levels of borrowing or a lot of credit card debt. But wait a minute, a TV is not the same thing as a restaurant meal. A restaurant meal you enjoy for a short period of time and then that's it. A TV you can enjoy for a really long time, that's why you buy it in fact. It's a durable good, you're going to enjoy it over a long period of time. So that explanation with the restaurant doesn't quite fit for explaining why, why people borrow too much for TV type purchases rather than restaurant type purchases. That's where my research comes in. So our research uh, joined with Paul Heitwis looks at it from the seller's point of view, not the consumer's point of view, or to be more accurate, how the sellers react to the consumer's psychological tendencies. Let's look at the TV example. So again, think of the consumer just for simplicity as having only two choices. Either pay a thousand euros within six months or repay two thousand euros in a few years. From our perspective, it's not just the consumer's strong preference for the present that generates uh, this kind of overborrowing, but the seller's reaction to that. So the seller knows that the consumer tends to prefer the present, so therefore tends to prefer to delay repayment. And the seller also know that, knows that many consumers are naive about that. They don't think they're going to do that. The seller knows that and is designing the contract explicitly to take advantage of that. So what does this mean for policy? It means that probably many consumers are being exploited, they're being taken advantage of by these contracts. So we should probably do something about that. We think traditional disclosure regulations are not going to be enough in this setting because consumers are still naive, we can see that. And how did this close to a consumer how he's going to behave anyhow? So we need to go beyond disclosure and probably regulate the contracts themselves. The first key takeaway is that we shouldn't be just looking at it from the consumer's point of view, that he has a strong preference for present pleasures or consumption, but it's the interaction between the seller and the consumer. And the other takeaway is that the seller is in control here. The seller knows that on the one hand, the consumer has a strong preference for today over tomorrow, and on the other hand, uh, that the consumer is naive about that. And the seller is specifically designing this contract to take advantage of that.